Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJuryBytes.com. Today what we're going to do is work with SVG files in Blender and learn how to model with them. Um, there are some things you have to know and we're going to start this with a PNG file or you can use a JPEG file, whatever you have. And I would suggest that you use black and white images so that they convert to SVG files easily. Let's get started. Okay, so first and foremost, what we have to do is we have to get a file, and I'm going to bring up, I'm using this on a Mac, but it'll work with either a PC or a Mac the same way. So right here, I have a, uh, an image of a New York Yankees logo, and I have an STL version of a 3D model of a baseball. And what I'm going to do is make a quick pendant out of this, but first things first, we're going to show you how to take this image, which is a black and white image. We're going to convert it to an SVG file by using a simple and free online utility that you can uh, that you can go to at a website and I will put that link below so let's get started with that so the website that we're going to go to is this particular website it's called pixsvg.com and I will put a link again to this website in the description below what you're going to do is you're going to upload your image so I'm going to hit upload I'm using a PNG file you can use a JPEG a PNG uh, or any similar file and I'm going to go to my desktop where I have that under SVG and I'm going to pull up the Yankees logo and I am going to hit open. It's going to bring up this little utility here and it's going to show me my original file and the SVG version of that. Now this is not exactly what I want. I want it to be solid so I'm going to come over to invert one and see if that converts it and if it doesn't we'll just keep trying until we get to a solid version of our Yankees logo and it looks like ready one works perfect so now I have a black and white SVG file here I have my original PNG file here and then I can just select download SVG and I click that and it will ask me where I want to save it and I'm going to hit save link content as, let's see if I can do that. I'm going to put this under SVG. I'm going to rename this Yankee SVG and hit save. And that tells me it saved it. I'm going to close this up and now I'm going to look at my browser here in my file in my folder I have the STL of the baseball I have my original picture and I have the Yankee SVG file so now I want to bring this SVG file into blender that's pretty simple let's go over to blender I'm going to zoom out here a little bit and I am going to show you how to do this uh, importing an SVG file is very easy it's a utility that's built into uh, Blender 2.8, 2.9, 2.79. Um, to find it, if it's not active on your system, come over to Preferences. And let me bring this over to the middle. And we're going to go over to Add-ons. I'm going to hit the search icon here and type in SVG. And you can see here it says Import, Export, Scalable Vector Graphics, SVG. And make sure there is a check mark in that box. If there is not, put one there. And then you can close that up. That brings up a menu option under imports. So we'll come over to file, import, and select SVG file. Now I'm gonna go over to my desktop, SVG, and then here is our Yankee SVG file. And I will import that. And there it is. Now this is a curve object in Blender, so we can't really mod model it. So I'm gonna hit the tab key to go into edit mode with the selected, and you can see just like that it is a bunch of curves if I select a point here if you remember from my previous video where I talked about curves we have influence lines here so I can move these around you can see I can influence that whole object as a curve I'm gonna press control Z and go back to normal and press the tab key go back into object mode with the SVG image of our logo selected I'm gonna right click on it come down to convert to mesh and now if I go back into edit mode you can see we have a mesh image so I'm going to select my faces tool then I'm going to press A on my keyboard to select all the faces I'm going to hit extrude hit the E key and then Z and then I'm going to move my mouse up a little bit so that we're extruding along the Z axis I'm going to hit tab to go back into object mode and here you can see we have a solid model 
of our SVG, which is a logo of the New York Yankees. Now, just because I like working with things um, centered in the world, I will hit set origin to center of mass. I'm gonna hit shift S and I'm gonna place this in the middle. You can see it puts it in the middle of our 3D world. And I am gonna hide that model just like so. Okay, so now I want to make a pendant and I wanna use that baseball 3D image that I downloaded. It's a model I got off of Thingiverse. You can get yours anywhere you want. So I am going to hit file import and I'm going to import an STL file because that's the version of the baseball that I have. I'll import that. Might take a moment or two. Okay and there is our 3D model and I can hit tab you can see now we're in edit mode and you can see that is a 3D model. I'm going to go back into object mode with the tab key. I am going to right click on this set origin to center of mass. I'm going to put this in the middle and we'll look at this from the side and what I want is basically the reverse side so I really want this to be what I see and then I want my logo in the middle and we're gonna cover how I'm gonna make this a little bit flatter so I'm gonna actually add a box I'm gonna go to shift a add a mesh and a cube I'm gonna size that up so that it's bigger than the ball and I'm gonna move that over to about here and that's about the only part of this particular baseball that I want so with my cube selected, I'm going to hold the shift key down, select the baseball. I'm going to use my Boolean tools to apply a difference modifier to that. And that should leave us with a partial baseball there. And now because no pendant should be so heavy that this would cost thousands of dollars in gold, if we're going to make it out of gold, I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to go over to mesh and I'm going to add in a sphere, a UV sphere, just like so. I'm going to size that up. To about here. If we look at this from the side perspective, what I'm trying to do is basically hollow out my my baseball just a little bit, about like so. And that looks good. I'm going to, with my sphere selected, I will hit the shift key and then press on the baseball and again apply a difference modifier to that. And now we have a hollowed out baseball. So if I look at this from the side view or the front view, here we go. I want to make this a little uh, shallower. So again, I'm going to hit the center origin, center of mass. Uh, I'm going to hit shift S and apply, uh, move that to the center. And now I'm going to, with my cutout of the baseball selected, hit control A to apply the rotation and scale, just in case I rotated this in any different direction. And we'll look at this again from the side. I'm going to hit S and then X and then I'm gonna shrink this a little bit so it's mostly like so. <clears throat> and then from the front view, you can see we have a nice view of baseball there. Okay, uh, if, we, if you followed my video on the uh, cancer survivor pendant, you know I wanna add a bail for, or I wanna add a loop at the top for a bail. So I'm gonna hit Shift A. We're gonna come over and add in a torus and I'm going to rotate that around so we can see our torus. I'm going to give this 48 segments here so we get some better definition to it. I am going to make this a little bit bigger and make the middle bigger just like so. And that looks good there. I like that. I'm going to click off. I'm going to hit this and so with that selected I'll hit rotate R key with the Y axis 90 degrees and I'm going to move that up to about here. So that is the a place that I'll be applying the bail for this. I'm going to move that up a little bit more and just in a little bit. Okay, I like the way that's positioned. With that selected, I will hit the shift key and hold that down, select my baseball, and then put a union modifier on these so that they become one object. And now we have a baseball with a loop at the top for a bail. That's done now. Let's hide that and bring back our New York Link Yankees logo. And we are going to rotate this on the X axis. So I'm going to hit with the selected RX90. 
And then I believe I have to rotate this on the z-axis, so RZ90. And I'm going to size this up just a little bit. I'm going to bring back my baseball so we can see what it looks like, and I'm going to hold my logo in front of it. And from the front view, you can see it's just a little too big, so we'll size that down a little bit more. Right about like so. And that looks good. I'm going to press Control A with the Yankees logo selected. Hit the rotation and scale. And make this as simple as possible. I can extrude this or, or size it along the X axis. So hit SX and I can just kind of do this with it and put that logo right into the baseball like so. Uh, let's SX, we'll just make that a little bit thicker like so. That looks good. And that's one way of doing it. And then if I apply that, I can hold the shift key down, select my baseball, and then apply a union modifier to those. And then we have one object with the Yankees logo in the center of it. And if I make this gold, I'm just gonna apply a texture to it so we can see what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna come over to shading. And then you kind of get the feel for what that will look like. I'm just gonna hit shade smooth. And just to make my images sharper, I'd split and apply. So that'll give you an idea of what that object look like, looks like. And just by importing an SVG file of whatever image you want, again, I suggest you use a black and white image and not anything in color because color will kind of fade uh, the SVG object, put little holes and indents in it, which won't model well. Now, for those of you who want to bend this along the surface of the curve, there's one quick way to do that. And I will grab this particular face right here. Um, and I will select the proportional editing tool. I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to select this. I'm going to hold down that red arrow and I'm going to pull this out. And then you can see under my circle of influence, I can basically make this a little bit of a bow. And I'm just going to do it about like so. Um, give it a, conf a, a circumference about like that. And if I look at this from the side, and I want to just do a little bit more, maybe like that. Hit the tab key, go back into object mode, and then I can move this right over our object. And now I have curved letters over that. And then I can select the, I can hold the shift key down, select the baseball, and then apply the union modifier to that. And again, we have our object. But you'll see there are some little lines in here. Um, I just want to give you a little warning. Apparently the remesh tool, the remesh modifier does not work well in Blender 2.9. 01 so um, I have a little problem getting that to work I'm going to go look at that in a little more detail but I did want to show you basically how to get this to work uh, with SVG files to do some modeling and then this way if I come over to this you can see it's uh, it's kind of large we want to make this maybe a little smaller maybe I want this to be about 50 millimeters uh, that's pretty good and that would make a nice size pendant for somebody. And then all you have to do is add your bail to that once you've 3D printed and cast it. So that's how we work with SVG files. I did show you quickly how to convert it online for free, and I hope that does help. And I, again, I do recommend that you use black and white bitmap images or PNG file images, whatever you choose. Color images are not going to convert to SVGs very well to use with 3D modeling. So keep that in mind. If you like this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. And if you want to get notifications every time I upload a new video, then hit that little, that, that little notifications bell, and you will get a notification every time I upload a video. Thanks for watching, guys, and enjoy the weekend.